Well, I'm going to continue carving uh, uh, the seat, or start carving the seat, I guess, because uh, the last time that I left you, I drilled and tapered these holes up here. Uh, so now what I've done, I've already roughed out the seat because that's in the general chair making information. But what's specific about this shield seat is the areas right out through here. And so that's what I'm going to be showing you uh, right now. Now if we can, uh, so I've already hogged all this material out with the ads. I've gone down an inch deep right here that, that those of you that have the plan see that uh, it's, uh, uh, my depth is three and a half inches from that gutter right there and it's an inch deep and about three and a half apart and uh, so that's my deepest part and then everything else come, comes down to there so if you don't have the blends you, you know how to carve it. Uh, so now I'm going to uh, draw this out over here on this side but I want to go to the plans first and show you what we're talking about and kind of translate those plans for you. So let's go there next. Okay, so uh, what we're doing is we're going to draw the profile that's on the front of the seat. So if you look right here, you'll see one and seven eighths, that's the thickness of the seat overall, and then three quarters would be measuring from the bottom. I'll put a mark right out here on the, like the corner of the seat, and the first thing I'll do is start here at the pommel and draw a line down to that three quarter mark. Now I start out by drawing a straight line and then I put a little tick mark underneath it and give a slight curve to it and the reason I do that is to keep me from making that curve too much so I'm using that straight line as my reference. So we'll do that first and then I'll go to the side and I'll come up to the front of the gutter and with a slight sweep connect the front of the gutter with that three-quarter inch mark. So let's go back to seat. So this is the top of the seat and I'll be sure to do it from the top of the seat. I've drawn it from the bottom of the seat before and luckily I've never cut. I've always noticed that I drew it from the bottom. So make sure you're at the top and there's the three-quarter mark from the bottom right there and I've just connected that with a straight line. Um, now I'm going to put a mark about, say, right there, about an eighth below, and using the straight line as a reference, I'll make a sweep to come around right like that. Now I'll have to do, I can't do that while it's on the side. I'm going to have to raise it up and you won't be able to see it, but then I'll show it to you. So I'll leave it right like this. Okay, so now I've got these two kind of not so well defined crooked lines here that I've freehanded my draw knife straighten all that out and I'm going to cut down to then we come over here to this side so there's the front of the gutter right there and I just draw a little sweep right like that so it's got a slight curve to it right there. Okay, so I've got the left side drawn now. I've got both sides. Uh, then I'm going to start cutting into it with a draw knife. But before I do that, I want to take you back to the uh, topographic map uh, the contour, showing the contours of the sea. And I'll show you what I'm, what I'm going to go after. Okay, so here's the uh, topo map. And it's on eighth inch increments, so it's starting at an inch and seven eighths and uh, going down. So right here's the one inch mark, and it goes a little bit, uh, a little bit deeper than that. So I go about one inch deep right here, right here in the middle, and you can see how steep it is coming back up on the back, <coughs> and uh, how just almost a straight shot, just with a slight curve in it coming down to the bottom. But the the problem areas are right in here on this particular chair. I like to have a dip right here and come back up to a little high point there. I ought to have the leg shown here. It'd be good so you could reference off of it. The leg is about right there, right on the edge of, of that topo line right there. So you can see I dropped to about, I dropped down about a quarter inch right here off of this and dropped fairly fast. So that's what's pretty right there is dropping off pretty fast. 
And then I come back up an eighth of an inch right there. So that's an eighth lower than this. And then I drop back down another three eighths or so and then back up again. Uh, so it, this area is where you can cut a V that you don't want the V. And uh, so it's actually a good precursor to the bottom cut back over here, which is a real difficult cut, which we'll get to later. But right now I'm going to show you how to do all of this, but in particular concentrate on this area right, right there. Okay. 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 All right, so the cutting off this section right here, and uh, the way that I use the drill knife is you're trying to use the whole entire knife. So I'm starting way up here on this end, or down here on this end, whichever way, and I'll be pulling right like that. So I'll be slicing, and I've also got it skewed. And so you can take some big cuts like that. Okay, so uh, now you can get way back up here by getting that handle down into the seat. Otherwise, you're limited. If you don't get the handle down to the seat, then say you were cutting up here and trying to get back here, you can't do it because the handle's hit. So that's the way I get so far down there. Okay, now I'm going to cut right to the line. So right here, I want to cut a lot out of there, and the only way to do it is to get that handle way down in there. Okay, so there goes that part, and I'm going to turn around while you aren't looking, and I'm going to do this part, and because uh, it's done the same way. And then I'll show you this more difficult part right there. Okay, so the idea here is to create or maintain a downhill. So if I start right into here, I'm already cutting uphill right here. So I know I, I'm going to have to do stop cuts, which you can do. But if I start out here and just maintain this downhill, then it'll let me cut a little further. I don't know where it's going to stop me, but I'll go until it says... Nope, you can't go anymore. So I'm starting to get a little splitting right down here, so i got to watch it. So right there is probably all that's going to let me do, but I can cut right up here a little bit more. Okay, I like it a little bit crowned right there, and I'm down on my line now. So now I'm going to work my way up to here. Now to keep from cutting a V, you have to remove all the material in back of that bevel because what makes you cut the V is there's too much material in back of the bevel to be able to scoop and it forces you straight down and you end up cutting a V right here. So what I'm going to do is cut these stop cuts. So if you can see that, I'm ending my cut on the up note. And so just think of it as trying to leave a little island right here. You're not trying to get all the way down to the line yet. You're leaving a little island here, and I'm working my way up. So you see I've got the handle way down here so I can cut all the way across. Okay? But I'm still not down to the line. Working my way up. And now I've got about one more cut right up here, and I'll be touching the line at this point. But I've still got my island right there. Okay. So I'm right at the gutter, and now I'm right on the line. And now, because there's no material right here, I can lay that bevel down flat and take out that little island that I left. Okay, now I'm right on my line. Now I'm going to have to come back from the other side to get all that out. So, see, just remove material, try to create a downhill. Now here, 
I don't want to slip and come back up into here, so I want maximum control on the knife. So if you can see my arm right here, the elbow is up against my body, and the, the elbow is locked in, and the wrist might even be locked in. Let's see. Yeah, I'm barely moving in. So what's moving is my shoulder, and the elbow is sliding across the body to give it control. So I don't slip. I want to do that. So once again, in no hurry to get to the line, just try and remove as much material back up here as possible, leaving that little island right there. Okay, so now I've gotten almost there. Everything's removed there now. And now I can just lay that bevel down and come right into that last cut. But you see, I'm able to come up right like that. Now, it's going to split out with me if I continue on, so I'm going to flip around and come back from, from the other side. Go. Now I've still got a little bit of the original surface right there and this point is an eighth inch below this. So you can wait and do that with a score or I can just pop it off right like that. Okay, so I'll do the other, other side and uh, then we'll take a look at a little bit of blending there. Okay, so one of the more difficult parts is right, just right back in here again, because once again, you can cut a V with a scorp just like you can with the, with the draw knife. So I'm going to remove this very similar to what we just did with the draw knife. So I'm going to start right there, make, a, make some stop cuts, and work my way back up towards the gutter. Now every seat's going to cart a little different and you know you may be into a seat that won't even let you come past right there so that's just what you have to do when you come back from the other side. Other ones will let you come all the way out but they won't let you go this way. It depends on how it's been sawn in the, in the log. So now I'll come back here, do the same thing but with a little bit more control because I don't want to slip and come back up into here so I've got my elbows tucked in tight. So there we go. A little bit rough right in there. That's fine. You could go back and get it with the skirt, but I'm going to be coming in with travishers anyway. Now I want to take off this bit right here. Uh, I'm not sure which way it's going to let me cut. Look at that. Just really nice and pretty that way. And according to the topo map there that I made, I like it about 3 8 to 7 16 below that, right at that point, right there where your leg passes, passes through. So, uh, seat's not going to let you carve this way right there, then you're going to turn around and go back from the other direction. So, when I was doing this side, when I got to going whatever way it was, all you could see was my back. So, we just cut that one out and decided I'd show you from, from this side right here. So, uh, so, I've already cut back that way, and now... And your seat might want you to cut that way, it might want you to cut that way. It, it, it'll tell you if you listen to it. It'll start squawking if you're cutting it wrong.
So you can see it's tearing with me a little bit right there, and that's fine. I got by with what I needed to get by with. those points down, those points down. Now I'm going to turn my attention to this pommel. And of course the pommel's right out here and I don't know what you call the line that is the extended pommel, so I'm going to call it the extended pommel. Uh, where I just, I don't leave it in all of my chairs, but I do in the continuous arm. So first thing i got to do is get rid of all that material right there. Or most of it. Best way to do that is with the score. redraw the line and since this rule bends and I've always got it in my hand or in my pocket and I'll let that thing go down there somewhere from there to there about seven inches. So now I'm going to remove material on either side of that. I want this to be real flat and pristine, and uh, I'm going to do that with a block plane. I've got my little Stanley 60 and a half. See how. So that's nice and sweet. Now I'll put the line back in. <clears throat> and now here you can go back in with a score or if you have any type of Travisher or heel shave, you can go back in there with it, and uh, I'll, I'll get out the bulk with the scorp, and then I'll so there's cut. Now I'll get one of those done. Those little heel shaves. So uh, these little things, I, I showed these on that uh, basic information video. These are shoemaker's tools and the handles kind of curved down. I cut the handles off. Um, and uh, they, they get into some of these tight spaces real nice. So I'm able to get right up at that line. So these are sold as heel shades, that's H-E-E-L shades, and uh, or you might find them under Snell and Atherton, that was the company that made them. Could have been another company that made them too.
Okay, I could just keep cutting with this thing all day, nice curls like that. Um, but I'm going to stop on the seat right now because taking the travisher to the seat, following it with a scraper, that's all in the basic chair making information and I don't want to go into that on this because I've already filmed it, it's already there. So what I'll do is uh, I'll finish up the rest of the seat without you looking and then I'll turn my attention to the bottom of the seat where carving this right here is unique to a shield seat chair, the continuous arm and the comb back. Uh, and it's a real difficult cut so I want to take a lot of time and slow down on that and show you show you how I do that. So that's what, that's what I'll do next time.